Hi, Rodrigo. Um, welcome to Queen Mary. We're very pleased to have you here today. So um, I'm Belinda Nejay. I work as a reader in cancer biology. Particularly, I'm interested in HPV-related cancer. And in my lab, we are looking at a methylation biomarker to identify cancer early. So can you tell us a little bit about your goal at Firecruz and also a little bit more about um, how did you get into immunology? I'm very interested about that. Ah, thank you, Belinda, this afternoon. And I think that uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm actually a professor of immunology. I work basically with disease of poverty, mainly uh, worms and in general, and some of the protozoan that I've actually on the skin that uh, like leishmanizes. I um, I'm currently the vice president for research in biological collections at Phil Cruz, but I should do the research. And uh, well, I uh, I started a long time ago, <laughs> as you can imagine. Doing in, it can be very interesting. Immunology was a new field there at the time. So the fact that we were at the time of discoveries of BNT cells and that, that was very interesting. And that went through a discovery of so many things like uh, uh, interleukins and all that. So it, I find immunology very exciting to tell the truth, very uh, active area. You know, every year you see, you find new things and including understanding of cancers and, and related to different uh, process of cancer development, like methylation or process is really important. HPV, for example, is a disease that in Brazil is highly prevalent, HPV related diseases. So I think that uh, all the activities related to what the Queen Mary does and Phil Cruz does are quite complementary and I think we can learn a lot from each other. Rodrigo, can you tell us a little bit more about um, the strategy at Firecruz and what are you exactly doing globally? Phil Cruz, the main, the main activity of Phil Cruz is to work and do research for implementation, if possible, in the public health system of Brazil. And the public health system that we have is very similar to the UK. It's universal care, and every well, we like to we say that every citizen is entitled to health care. And uh, I think it's very similar here. And my role is actually to work uh, into looking for how we can stimulate and promote more science development in the in the healthcare uh, processes, including very basic very basic study. To, and also draw all, all the way towards the implementation. Not forgetting the need for you to have to take care of patients in hospitals. Your cruise has, has two hospitals in this in Rio de Janeiro, not in all units around Brazil. But you know it, this has been a way of working on translation process using the Fio Cruz hospital to do that. A lot of the social sciences work is also done in Fio Cruz to try to understand the process of how the population actually gets in, involved in the process of how to take care of their health. So that's also uh, some area that we, we do a lot. Besides history of science to do that the field is involved. So what I do is actually look for opportunities like like this one we have here with Kimmer to increase interaction of uh, researchers with the international community. And by actually look, having these uh, sort of activities, we can certainly implement new ideas, have new, new collaborations that we can develop and certainly evolve a lot more in our research in healthcare and social sciences. So the Foundation Deuterio Vargas and Queen Mary have launched a new funding, a seed funding actually. Could you tell me a little bit more about this? And also, can you um, tell me about the impact you would like to reach with this funding? This, this actually is a very nice program that we put together, the three of us. Queen Mary, Fio Cruz, and Fundação Getúlio Vargas, not better known as FGV. And uh, this uh, is a program we actually started before the pandemics. And we launched some seed money where we can actually put together three institutions to develop specific programs related to public health in general. Or now with economics, public health and economics, that's also a very important uh, thing that we need to do. And also to start to see whether this uh, seed fund can actually lead to the funding of at a higher level uh, that is uh, actually uh, put together by the researchers that are in the in the program. So this is in the in the first part before the pandemics, we we're able to find about it's been about it's mistaken about nine projects or maybe more a little more or a little less, and uh, all of these so just one 
we were able to actually continue funding through the pandemics because they, they were able to be done by uh, using video conference. And that was in uh, one of those communities in, the, in Rio, that's, that's called uh, Manguinhos. That's around Fio Cruz. It's a very large community with a lot of problems related to criminality and all sort of living. And there was only people's palace here at uh, Queen Mary. And uh, so this was a very successful, the catalog of this program was launched last year. And we hoped with new funding now, we take it to the next level of funding too, and develop new areas in, in implementation research, health economics, policies, and also basic research in some areas, not, uh, not, not that many, because the funds are not that huge. And we do hope that with that, we can actually increase the interaction between the organizations. So do you have any view about uh, the, the future, particularly, of the relationship in academia between Brazil and UK, particularly since the change in the government? Do you think this would have any impact on the collaboration? I, th I think that uh, even with the past government, I th the, the collaboration between Brazil and UK, it was not really hurt because of uh, the, the, the insistence, let's say this way, of and the, and the the resilience of all the of the researchers on doing the, the research together, and uh, I think that with the new government coming up, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm quite sure that that's going to change quite a lot in terms of more support to science. I say that because in the past President Lula did was really one of the major drivers in, in financing science and also in increasing the capacity of Brazil to, to develop scientific, the scientific work, including the, uh, the construction or, and also implementation of new universities throughout the country. So this allowed all the new researchers to actually get involved, not only in teaching, but also doing research. It's important that in Brazil, the, the, the academics, in Phil Cruz we do a lot, of, not the, the university teaching, I can, it's not basic level teaching, with a lot of postgraduate programs. And uh, for, the, for the other universities, have both, they have both. And uh, it was very interesting that we got a lot of new young scientists with a lot of drive to do research in these universities. So I'm a very optimist about the future. And I think the fact that uh, these universities are located in different parts of the country will allow us actually to develop new areas of research. Like we were discussing before, in terms of the research that you do in HPV, I think this in methylation process in epigenomics this is an area that I'm sure will be a, of a great interest for researchers in Brazil, as we saw in the last meeting with uh, Queen Mary in Rio. So I think that's a lot of this has to do with the future indication of public health and activities, how this can be actually implemented and how we can actually spread globally this process of public health policy and use of, the, of scientific information in, in taking care of the population. As we were speaking about universal health care, remember that uh, both England and Brazil have universal health care for the population. And I think the research that we do together is related to different as aspects of how you're going to take care of the population based on research that we do, even basic research or implementation research. We do hope as, as institutions, you know, Queen, Queen Mary, FGV, and, and Phil Cruz, to be able to develop this program as the global health program and be able to actually translate the information that we collect from our researchers to other populations in need and to other nations that are interested in how we develop the program and how our health systems work. So I think we have a very, very, very nice future in terms of the research that we would develop as a group in this program. So we know that UK and Brazil share similarities in the universal healthcare system. In your opinion, um, what are the, the big challenges fa that Brazil face in the future um, and how would you think this should be addressed? The challenges are many. And uh, although we do have well, the SUS, that's our universal health system program, there's, there's still a lot of problems to universal health system to actually reach populations in the interior of Brazil. You can imagine this, the size of the country, is, the country is huge. And we have a population spread all over the, that, the area. So, so it's sometimes it's hard to actually reach that population. 
the way I see if you have it actually together, we actually look for better ways to diagnose diseases and to treat diseases and to get these uh, systems that may be fast and easier to these populations, that would be a huge jump in our health systems. Like what you're talking about the systems that you work, uh, we're facing uh, papillomavirus and, uh, and uh, if, if you, if you, for example, take this research that you're doing, cervical cancer, you, are, you know it very well but that uh, cervical cancer is a huge issue in Brazil. So the, if you have that uh, to deliver to women in need, and there are many, uh, I think that will help enormously to avoid cervical cancer. Uh, there, there's a problem that I, I as we were discussing earlier, that uh, pathologists in Brazil are not that many anymore. And uh, having that actually, the slides, the, the, Papa, the Papa Nicolau slides being read by the pathologists is very difficult. So we do need faster, easier, and hard, faster delivery to the population. And they go in the middle of Brazil, nowhere in the middle of Brazil, I mean. And uh, we have what we call the community as, uh, assistance. Those are very effective in reaching this, this population, but not necessarily doctors. So by having used them, the community, the community assistance, we can actually do work together to actually develop, give, give this type of diagnosis for this population. Talking about women, but there are many other problems. And in general, I would just ask another question about the fact that what do you think will be the learning from, from the UK scientists as like global health scientists and what will be the learning then from them to, to go and, and work with you in Brazil? Well, I think that uh, there are a lot to learn, mainly related to the public health system that we have. Like, as I, the UK has a very well-developed health system and the, the population here is very well developed in terms of if you compare to, to Brazil, for example, or other countries. And I think by learning a little bit from what we do, uh, I say again, based on the, our immunization program, that I said I'm very proud of that immunization program, it's very effective. And during the COVID, it worked extremely well as usual. And I think that that's, that's why the population of Brazil get reached, even the very, very small village in the interior of Brazil to be vaccinated. So that's something you, that, uh, that uh, the, the researchers can learn and how that works, how you can actually coordinate in a country that size of an immunization program. That'd be interesting because basically, basically in the future, what we can do together, we take this uh, to other countries in Africa, for example, that we also need to do large vaccine coverage programs. And uh, I think this is one of the areas that you, you can learn together a lot. In the, UK researchers can understand how it works. Thank you very much, Rodrigo, for sharing all this with us today. And we really look forward to hear more and have some very strong partnership with Brazil coming in. Oh, thank you, Belinda. And I think that uh, what we did, we were doing just a little part of the, what we need to do in the near future. Uh, this call is going to be very interesting. And uh, the seminar we had in Sao Paulo already was very interesting.